This is applicable. Don't complain. Don't say a thing. Say inshallah. Yes, now. Nah. And do it. Thirdly, don't scream or raise your voice. And don't wake them up. Screaming is, you know, is, is an ill matter. Is a, is a bad character to do with the people, period. Unless you give a lecture like myself. Uh, so that's not, that's not entertained, you know, in any situation. Let alone with one's parents. Waking them up. We have an uh, amazing narration in Bukhari about the three who were stuck in the cave. Remember, we used the same actually added in the Tawassu lecture. And those three that were stuck in the cave, that the, the, the stone or the, the rock rolled and blocked them in the cave, they wound up making dua to Allah. They did tawassal to Allah through their good deeds. And one of them, what was his story? He used to go out to his flock and he would milk the, the, the sheep or whatever that was, cows, whatever, and he would bring the milk every night and he will give it to his parents. He will not have his children drink until his parents drank the milk first. After his parents would drink the milk, he would give his children and go to sleep. One time, while he was out and about handling his business, he was delayed. He brought the milk back, went to his parents, he found them what? Asleep. Now one of us, huh? What would he do? Mom, mom, dad, mom, dad, you know, whatever. I hope you don't do anything else. Some children, you know, bring the, the loudest alarm, put it in their ears. Never do that. Anywho, you know what the man did? He stayed standing all night until Fajr, his children crying at his feet. They want to drink. But his habit was he would never let his children drink until his parents drank first. So he stayed up from, from after Isha, we're assuming, until Fajr. How many hours is that? Standing with the milk with him until they woke up and then he had them drink and then he made his children drink. Now you know where we stand? Which one of us can do this today? Now what does that teach you? The children. Sometimes we favor the children over the parents. He didn't favor the children over because of this of worship of his, his sincerity, he made dua to Allah and the rock was moved away. Meaning Allah is pleased with that or not? Allah is pleased with that. Don't wake them up. They want to rest? Let them rest. Don't favor your wife and the children, I explain that. And I will add the wife, because usually, we, we, we are all familiar with World War I, World War II, but we don't know, or we do know that in every house, sometimes there's World War III going on, it's been going on between the, you know, the lovely couple, the wife and the mother. I don't know why, subhanAllah, you know, compatibility and incompatible, somehow, very often they're incompatible. Uh, and very, sometimes they are. So if you find some compatible mother-in-law and daughter, that's wonderful. But even if they're not compatible, that does not allow you to put your mother on the side in order to please wifey. Your mother, is still a priority over your wife and your children. <coughs> and so very often mothers get involved in the, in the whole thing, you know? They want to get involved in everything because she's jealous. You used to be her baby, now you're someone else's baby. <laughs> and uh, not, you know, even though the nature of the relationship is not the same, obviously, still that compassion in the mother kicks in when she sees that there's someone else who loves her son. So naturally, they're not going to be happy campers all the time. And you need to be a very diplomatic, if I may say, you know, uh, individual who knows how to deal with the situation. Now, don't get either side upset. But don't you dare, don't you dare take sides with your wife against your mother, even if your mother's wrong. You stand up for justice, but you don't become disrespectful and undutiful to your mom or father. You may still speak the truth if your wife is being oppressed. But when you do so, you have to do it in the wisest, most gentle fashion you could ever think of. And avoid confrontation as much as possible. And we have to be very wise. Otherwise, World War III, right? Without nuclear bombs or anything. It's with the tongues usually. So be careful there. Uh, fourthly, or fifthly, uh, they deserve that you make dua for them. 
both whether they are alive or whether they have died and passed away. Because the end of the ayah, Surah Al-Isra, وَقُلْ رَبِّ الْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا And say, our Lord, my Lord, my Master, have mercy on them as they brought me up while I was young. So they deserve that you make dua for them. Uh, sixthly, be a nice, you know, good buddy to them. Apply the hadith of ummuka thumma ummuka thumma ummuka thumma abuk. Try to be a friend to your mom or a friend to your dad. Why is that important? Because when you are on good terms with your parents and they know you the best, when you are deviating or when you are in trouble, you're in a bad situation, no one knows you better than your own parents. So their advice is the most suitable. Whereas your friend in school does not know you as well. So when you want to seek advice, no one knows you better than your parents. And because of that, you should be on good terms with your mom. Secondly, no one loves you more. No one has more mercy. No one will show more mercy after Allah to you than your own parents. So they will always advise you to do that which is best for you. At least in their, in their, in their mind. Sometimes what they think is good is not necessarily good. But still, in the sincerity, as far as they're concerned, they will have the most sincere advice because they usually want the best for you. And we have a hadith which supports that. A hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. جَاءَ رَجُلُ لِلْنَبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فَاسْتَذَرَهُ مِنْ جِهَادِ فَقَالَ لَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَحَيُّ الْوَالِدَاكَ قَالَ نَعَمْ قَالَ فَفِيهِ مَا فَجَاهِدْ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ now listen to this hadith. It's in a Bukhari and Muslim and there's different wordings in both narrations. A man went to the Prophet Sallallahu He said, I have come to you, I have come to you in order to engage in fighting in the cause of Allah. He came to engage in jihad with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In a hadith in, uh, uh, in Muslim, he told him, are your parents alive? Are your parents alive? He said, yes. He said, then in them, do struggle. That's the title of the lecture. Your jihad, your struggling, your striving is with your parents. Now we know that fighting for the sake of Allah is among the most superior acts of worship. Dying for the sake of Allah is as good as it gets for a slave. And for a Prophet to tell someone, return and do jihad with your parents by being good to them and kind to them. That's the other narration explains it. The other narration explains it. He told him, Abtaghi al Allah. He said, you looking for reward from Allah? He said, yes. He said, then go and stick to them and treat them kindly. Ahsan suhbatahuma. Make your companionship with them as excellent as it can be. So here we learn the, the great rights of the parents. Because if the parents did not know about the departure of the son, or the daughter, which you're not allowed to travel without their permission, FYI. Your boss cannot tell you tomorrow I want you to go to Riyadh, and you think you can just pack your stuff and leave without asking your mom and dad first. You know that you have to ask them. You have to ask him before you travel. And in this hadith, the man went all the way to the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't take a plane. Allah knows where he came from. He sent him back. And his, his mission was to treat his parents kindly. SubhanAllah. That shows you the rights of the parents. It's not a joke. Tayyip. Uh, you need to spend on them. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 215. Say, whatever you spend of good, then it is to the parents and the closest relatives, your relatives. The best sabaqah, the best sabaqah, if if they do not depend on you, if they're financially unable, it's your job, my brother in Islam, to take care of your parents financially. <coughs> you have to suffice them. You have to suffice them financially. You have to spend. Spending on them is double reward. You're being dutiful to your parents and you're keeping the kinship ties, triple reward. And the sadaqah itself. That's as good as it gets. That's other than spending on other people. So we need to spend on them. If your parents are financially, uh, you know, unable to maintain themselves, then it becomes an obligation on the children, particularly the, the, the boys or the sons, to take care of their parents and spend on them according to your ability.
طبعا لا يكلف الله نفسا الا وسعها الله does not uh, burden a soul beyond its scope if you yourself are suffering financially then you only spend on them according to your ability but you can't be driving a big old fancy car while your parents are unable to pay the rent you can't and you must suffer in order to have them survive the same way they suffered in order for you to survive and Allah says in the Quran هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is the reward of good, excellence, anything but excellence? If this is what they did for you, that's what you need to do for them. Furthermore, in the hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah in Sahih ibn Majah, Sahih Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah, a man complained to the Prophet he said, O Messenger of Allah, I have some money, and I have some children, and my father wants to take over my money. He told him, أَنْتَ وَمَالُكَ لِأَبِيكَ he said, you and your money belong to your father. You and your money belong to your father. That's why the scholars say, if you have money, your father has the right to take of your money what he needs, as long as he doesn't put you in a tough situation. If you're well off, he can take whatever he wants. Because you and your money belong to your father. He's the one who brought you into this dunya by Allah's leave and permission. So don't be stingy now. When you become old, and then I'm not even going to discuss, nor will I imagine a Muslim taking his parents to one of these, you know, elderly uh, places, where when they get tired of old people, they just put them over there and let them suffer for their die in some, you know, I don't imagine a Muslim doing this ever in his life, right? This is all, you know, way out. Now we're speaking with the, within the margins of an intellectual people that have some deen. That means your parents are where they want to be. And the best place is for them to be with you in order for you to be able to serve them and provide service continuously. Hey. After they die, may Allah have mercy on them, if they're among the Muslims, their rights do not end. In the hadith, it's an amazing story. Ibn Umar, who was with Ibn Dinar, walking in the desert, and he came across a Bedouin. When Ibn Umar saw him, he went off his donkey and he made that, that Bedouin ride the donkey. He was wearing a turban, he untied his turban and he wrapped it around his head and he gave it to him and gave him the salam. Ibn Dinar said, You know, Aslahak Allah, may Allah rectify your condition. Man, this is a Bedouin. If you gave him anything, he would be pleased. Yeah, he, you don't need to give him your donkey and your, your imama. You give him anything, give him some, some oud, he'll be happy. You know what he told him? He said, this man's father was a friend of Umar ibn al-Khattab, his father, back in Jahiliyyah. And I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, إِنَّ مِنْ أَبَرَّ الْبِرِّ صِلَةُ الرَّجُلِ أَهْلَ وَدِّ أَبِيهِ بَعْدَ أَنْ يُوَلِّيهِ رواه مسلم Among the best righteousness, the best good deeds you can perform is that you keep good relations with those whom your parents have used to have good relations with. يعني you continue to connect and keep the kinship ties with their relatives and even their friends. The scholars say, why is that? Because if you were to meet your father's, if he had passed away, may Allah have mercy on him, your father's friend. And when you see him, when you see him, you honor him, and you kiss his head, and you treat him, what would he do? He would remember your father, and he would make dua for him. Usually, he would make dua for your father because he's seen from you, you're a good person with good character, then he will see that the father had done a good job by having you exist. Or if he had forgotten about him, you will be means of reminding him. That's one of the wisdoms behind it. But among the best deeds is that after they die, 